The Addiction Podcast, Point of No Return. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Addiction Podcast, Point of No Return. My name is Joni Siegel, and I'm the host for this podcast. My husband, Steve Siegel, is the producer for this podcast. Today's episode is episode number 294. Just a reminder to please subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a five-star rating. That way, people who are affected by addiction can Google podcasts about addiction and they will find our podcast. Please also subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell so that you're notified when we put up a new episode, and give us a thumbs up on our videos. Today, we have an interview with a gentleman named Leonard Lee Bouchel. Leonard overcame addiction and has devoted his life to giving back to writers in recovery by creating a safe and supportive outlet. Leonard was born into an idyllic Jewish family in North Philadelphia. He had loving parents and a three-year-old brother. At just two weeks old, Leonard was dealt a blow that would derail the solid middle-class path that was laid out in front of him. His father suffered a fatal heart attack on his way home from his job as postal clerk. As a boy, Leonard gravitated toward the corner candy store where the local bookie and a group of cigar-smoking streetwise philosophers bought and sold hot merchandise. They became his father figures. Leonard is the founder of Writers in Treatment, as well as the director of the Real, R-E-E-L, Recovery Film Festival and Symposium, which he founded in 2008. Without further ado, let's talk to Leonard Bouchel. There we go. Leonard Bouchel, thank you so much for talking to us today about you, your experience. Mm. So tell us a little bit about your background and where you grew up and kind of how you went down the road of addiction, and then we'll talk about what you're doing now. Well, it's all in this book, by the way, that I could answer all of your questions in this book. It's available on Amazon. Fair enough. It's available on Amazon 24 hours a day, and it's not too thick, and there's a lot of photographs. Uh, I'm from Philadelphia, and... And and the other question was, how did, what led me down the path of addiction? Correct. Love of getting high. Ah, huh? how old were you when you first got high? Seventeen. Seventeen. Marijuana. I was going to I was going to ask you what what it was, and there you go, you answered me. But did you then? That, did you? Before sorry. that, I, I was a compulsive gambler. I don't know if you consider that form of it's a form of getting high it's just not a substance and it's addiction but we really we really stick to drugs and alcohol did you progress to other drugs from marijuana mm. at some point i was doing an occasional psychedelic okay uh, and at some point i did snort start snorting cocaine okay and when I started smoking pot, my life sort of went from color, I mean, from black and white to color. And when I started snorting cocaine, it went from color to 3D technicolor. Huh. I, I did that every day for 13 years. Okay. So it seemed to be the right thing to do. Okay. And then how did you get clean or when did you get clean? How I and got when? clean. Because I thought I was having a nervous breakdown and I thought the police were about to arrest me. Mm. So I checked into a rehab 28 years ago. Okay. So you've been clean and sober for 28 years? Correct. Very well done, you. <laughs> it, it seems like a better, it seems like a more sustainable lifestyle. Exactly. So what happened then? What was your life like when you got clean and sober? And what were some of the changes that you made that led to your book? Well, the biggest change, I think, was that for the previous, I'd been using drugs for 26 years. Okay. Every, every single day. And drinking regularly, not compulsively, but regularly. Never didn't have a bottle of vodka in the freezer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had been dealing drugs up until the day I went into the rehab. Okay. 
for the previous 23 years. So the biggest thing that changed was I didn't think I was going to die of an overdose or get into a drunken driving accident. And I didn't think I knew how to make a living because I had depended on my previous career for 23 years. So for me, the main challenge was figuring out how to extract money from society without hurting anybody. Understood. And what uh, what did you decide to do there? At that point, I decided to sell my antiques, <laughs> sell some property I had in Big Sur, borrow some money from some generous family members. And my first job was uh, taking pictures for a real estate company, you know, going to houses that were for sale and taking their pictures. And it was before video. Video sort of took over. Uh, that's what I did at first and I ended up having at least a half a dozen assorted jobs after that, managing a French vintage poster gallery. I published a book, I co-wrote and published a wonderful book called Algae to the Rescue, Everything You Need to Know About Nutritional Blue-Green Algae. Oh. And we sold 27,000 copies of the book. Uh, it introduced a lot of people to spirulina and uh, the blue-green algae from Kalamath Lake. And it was very successful, and that kept me busy for a few years, because I also <clears throat> became the author's uh, manager and, and tour, tour, tour manager, because he was going around the country speaking about the benefits of nutritional blue-green algae, which I still take every day to this day. So there was a lot, and it wasn't until um, I went back to college and got my certification uh, as a certified substance abuse counselor that I sort of found my way into talking about what I knew best, which was addiction and getting off of uh, drugs and, and alcohol. Uh, so I got my my. I, it's called KDAC in California, and I started working as a drug counselor and did that until I founded the Real Recovery Film Festival 14 years ago. Where did you work as a drug counselor, Leonard? I worked at a facility in Los Angeles called Beth Shuva, and I also worked at a place called The Canyon in Malibu. So you can read about it in in the book. It's called Hi, Confessions of a Cannabis Addict. Okay. Uh, and I, I said, I worked in the hood and I worked in Malibu. And their success rate was about equal. And I got to see it sort of from, from both sides. And I myself went to a mid-range rehab, not fancy, but, 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 but effective effective just uh, once did you just go through treatment once you know i figured once is enough <laughs> I, I, and I, I was surprised because there were people there saying oh this is my third time and i was thinking we well, either you either get it or you don't or you either want it or you don't but i know that people's lives are so complex and and everybody's like a snowflake and every experience you ever had up until this moment makes you who you are. Mm -hmm. I was just very fortunate to realize that having studied Joseph Campbell, that I was on the hero's journey and the hero doesn't die from drug overdoses hmm. and the hero doesn't go to jail for drug dealing and the hero doesn't get drunk and fall down and hit their head on the fireplace and never wake up. Mm. So this was an opportunity. I needed the 28 days just to be able to prove to myself that I didn't have to get high every single day or take a drink every single night. Mm. Like I literally didn't know that lifestyle was possible. You know, I thought it was like against the rules of quantum physics. Mm. That letter Bouchel can't go a day without getting high. Dan Carity, if I'm being honest, is the new powerful podcast to listen to. Dan is a globe-trotting television personality, 
a choreographer to stars like Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake, a loving husband and father, and a man struggling with addiction and anxiety. On his podcast, he shares ugly truths from his life in front of and away from the camera, and those of his courageous guests as well, from the world of entertainment, sports, media, and medicine, such as NFL player Ryan Leaf, pioneer DJ Don Diablo, actor and comedian Jamie Kennedy, and many more. So check out his new podcast, Dan Carity, If I'm Being Honest, on Spotify, Apple, and Google, or go to his website, www.dancarity.com. That's www.dancarity.com. Now here is an incredible success. Roger Smith was kicked out of high school, was homeless, a drug addict, arrested multiple times, and yet this same man overcame incredible adversity and became the CEO of American Income Life Insurance, National Income Life Insurance, and Liberty National Life Insurance Companies. His journey is told in his new memoir, The Most Unlikely Leader. Roger is an example that no matter how low you go in life, you can always turn things around and become anything you set your mind to. If you are stuck in any real life challenge, this book is a fantastic must read for you. The Most Unlikely Leader, available on Amazon or wherever books are sold. Okay. But having been in a place where I didn't have any pot, and I obviously had no alcohol, every day I thought, wow, it's another day. And I'm starting to feel a little free. You know, hmm. that thing they promise you in the Anonymous 12-step program, that you'll be happy, joyous, and free? Yep. I started to under feel that. Interesting. And I started to feel that way. I mean, of course, regular difficult emotions and feelings do, you know, there is life. In fact, yep. I have a, I published an incredible e bulletin. It's called the Addiction Recovery e bulletin. We just celebrated our ninth year of continuous publication. Wow. Congratulations. It's also a website called Addiction Recovery e bulletin.org. Okay. Subscribe. You'll get it every Tuesday. And every week we put on an inspirational quote. We try and put on inspirational quotes, but I think next week's quote is by Samuel Beckett. And he says, you're on earth and there's no cure for that. <laughs> <laughs> A typical Samuel Beckett comment. Uh, so. And did you say it was .org or .com? Because the sign org. is right behind you. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm org. I'm an org. Addiction Recovery eBulletin.org. Okay, fair enough. I just like to repeat it just to make sure people hear that so that they can go yeah, there and they can uh, subscribe. You know, luckily, growing up in Philadelphia, I ended up also being a news junkie. Ah. Very privileged or fortunate at that time in the world of, of, of this planet and this country that we got the Philadelphia Inquirer delivered every morning. Mm hmm. And then around noon or after lunch, I'd go get the daily news. From, and then at four o'clock, the evening bulletin would end up in the news boxes on almost every corner. Ah. And I would I would look at all three, sometimes for sports scores, because I was a compulsive gambler, and there were different scores from different cities coming in all the time. Uh, and so, but I, and, and also to read movie reviews and, and, and arts articles. And so that's why I ended up using that addiction in a positive way, because now I do this newsletter, which has 30 news stories on it every single week. Wow. You know, all wow. based on the addiction recovery, big pharma, rehab scandals. You are listening to the Addiction Podcast, Point of No Return. For more information on the podcast or to reach out if you have a story you would like to share with us, go to our Facebook page by the same name, or you can email us at theaddictionpodcast at yahoo.com, or go to our website, theaddictionpodcast.com, or call us at 727-314-314. 7080. And please remember to subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a five-star review. 
Sometimes. The hardest thing about getting someone into recovery is getting them to agree to treatment. Bobby Newman, a certified drug counselor with 30 years experience and an over 85% success rate as an interventionist, has created a series of 12 videos that you can use right now to learn every step to get your loved one to agree to treatment. Call 866-989-4499 today and say the word podcast to get a 10% discount or go to newmaninterventions.com and type in the word podcast for a 10% discount. This service comes with a free one hour consultation with Bobby. Reviews of TV shows like Dope Sick. Right. Or, or, or films like Rocket Man by Elton John. So it covers almost every conceivable aspect of the drug addiction recovery universe. Got it. And and I originally started doing it because when I was a drug counselor, my second week there, my supervisor says, well, now you're going to a, to a group with 20 guys. You're going to conduct a group. I said, oh, is there a book of group topics? And he laughed. He said, no. You know, so I had to start making up my own. But I make sure that on the Addiction Recovery e-bulletin every week, there's a story in there that a drug counselor can print out and use it for a group, you know, for interesting topics. Oh, Whether that's it's cool. Scientific revelations or celebrity recovery stories. There's something in there that can provoke a group of people to have a conversation. And I think healing comes from, from conversation. And I agree. I agree. And information and education. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. You mentioned a film festival. Tell us about your film festival, Leonard. It's called the Real Recovery Film Festival. Here, don't look at that address. That's my son. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's the Real Recovery Film Festival. Okay. I started it 14 years ago in Los Angeles. Okay. Uh, obviously, the last couple of years... We had to go online, but we're back live in the theater in October in L.A. We usually do a week every year in New York, uh, which we did for eight years. This year, we weren't quite ready for New York, so we're just L.A., and it's a week. It's the longest recovery event in, in the country. It's also, it's days. a longer film festival, isn't it? Aren't they usually just like three or four days? Some are even longer. It depends uh, on what city and how much money and who your supporters are. But it's the longest recovery event where every day we show movies. And after every film, we either have a filmmaker doing a Q&A with the audience or we have a clinician who's very, who we try and match with the subject matter of the film. I love that. So we never just show a film and say, thanks, good night. We always have a, a what I call a mini process for it. You can call it a Q and A. You can call it a talk back. You can call it a, a conversation, and right. it's very interactive with with everyone. And the whole purpose of it is to help people in recovery, filmmakers in recovery, right? Well, the filmmakers aren't necessarily in recovery. Many of them are, but many of them aren't. Many of them have lost family members, uh, yeah, yeah, relatives. And they are inspired to make a film, or some of them are just young filmmakers who pick a subject that is about gambling addiction, or or uh, we have a lot of films that could be called Al Anon based, more okay. about the family. We have a great film uh, from Canada this Canada this year. Uh, it's called Something Tuesday, which is wonderful. We have a film from India. Uh, called Do Over, and the filmmakers are coming from India to Los Angeles to present their film. So there's a lot of good uh, energy in the theater and in the lobby and conversations. So it's like an event, you know, that you have to stop for an hour to watch a movie, but then you get to still express yourself and and network and meet other people. Right, right. That's, so I think that's awesome. What is it, what's the date of the film festival, Leonard? October 21st to the 27th. Okay. And a wonderful theater chain called the Lemley Theater. It's in North Hollywood. It's easy to get to. Uh, there's a website, Real Recovery 
filmfestival.org. Um, everything's a dot org. And it's real R E E L. Right. It was when we started it 15 years, 14 years ago. All we had were 35 millimeter films that we had to get from the distributor. Mm. You know, real old fashioned film reel. It's gone through several <laughs> transitions. Now it's there are no more film reels. Right. It's no more film. It, it's it's a, it's on a computer chip now. Smaller mm-hmm. than your phone. It's called DCP, uh, digital <laughs> compact something. <laughs> there was a couple of years where we could show DVDs. Right. That was like okay, preferably Blu-ray. If people remember what that was. remember Blu-ray. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm much different than regular, uh, but now that it's, it's you know, it's, and and part of the reason that we were able to start 14 years ago was because that was the time when video equipment, the price started to drop precipitously. Yep. You know, before that, you need like two thousand dollars worth of equipment to shoot something that could be a good enough quality to show on a big screen. Now, for five hundred dollars, you can get a Sony something or another. And shoot a film and we can project it on a big screen. And no one, maybe some people do notice the difference, but you yeah. really don't notice it. You're looking at characters in the story. You're not looking at the quality of the film because it's definitely better than what you're seeing on your on your screen at home. And it's on a big screen. So the fact that anybody can make a movie now, all you need is a good idea, a couple of friends, the inclination, the inspiration, and 500 bucks. You have, you have a movie. And yep. this year, we had over 150 submissions from around the world. We're very wow. particular about the films uh, that get selected. Yep. They have to be, you know, the m- number one criteria is they have to be an honest depiction of whatever subject matter uh, they're dealing with. Right. And it has to be well made and it has to be interesting. Mm hmm. Sometimes they're inspirational, sometimes they're not. We're dealing with addiction. The endings are not always happy. Nope. But they're honest. Yep. And it makes people in the audience feel like, oh, I think I'm going to stay sober another, another, you know, I want to do this another day because I don't want to end up like that guy. Or like, oh, I was that guy. I'm so happy to be clean and sober now. Yep. So it's very, it's inspirational in that way. It's either like a cautionary tale or, or, I don't want that to be me again. Right. I think and, it's similar similar to yeah. our podcast. We tell all kinds of stories and we're story yeah. based. Some have happy endings, some don't. No. And, and that's, and, that's oh, yes, life. the next question. I just want to mention that we always like to get as many clinicians to attend as possible. Okay. They'll see their clients on screen the way their client really lived or is still living. Right. As opposed to where a client presents in the office, which everybody can clean up for, you know, 50 minute hour yep. to talk to the therapist. But this it shows the therapist who that person was a year ago before they, you know, started to quit. Yep. Do me a favor, Leonard, and give us the website for your e-bulletin and also for the film festival one more time. It's addictionrecoveryebulletin.org. This is on Amazon 24 hours a day. I'll mention it one more time because my manager says I'm not pushing the book enough. Absolutely. And I will put the cover in the video so we can do that. that. That's Mm -hmm. in my imagination. Yeah. (laughs) But if I did, they would say, we're here to sell books. No, (laughs) I'm here to let people know that it's funny. Okay. It's insightful, a lot of good anecdotes, and it's an interesting arc from being a 17-year-old who starts smoking their first joint and graduates to drug dealing and graduates to having two sons and to getting married and and, and going through heart five-hour heart surgery, brain wow. surgery. Uh, luckily, the heart surgery and the brain surgery was after I got sober. Okay. I, I would not be alive if I had still been the addict that I was. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have been strong enough to withstand the trauma of a five-hour surgery. Wow. So that was like, 
it's that's like one of the gifts they don't talk about. Like, oh, you're gonna do, do like when you do need surgery, which it seems like almost everybody needs at some point. Mm -hmm. You're gonna mm -hmm. get through it because your body is gonna be able to be strong and to heal quickly, and and, and that's a big benefit. Real Recovery Film Festival dot org. Okay. R E E L. And I have a personal website, leonardbouchel.com. Awesome. And it's easy to find. And Facebook, I'm a Facebook devotee. Okay. Or maybe I'm just a prisoner of it. I <laughs> can't figure out which. Uh, so, Leonard Bouchel on Facebook, and there's a Real Recovery and, Film Festival page on, on Facebook. And I pronounced it incorrectly. It's Bouchel, but it's spelled B-U-S-C-H-E-L, Leonard That's Bouchel. Right. Yes. I believe it's originally Austrian. Oh, okay. Should be two dots above the, the U. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. There's, so there's the book. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. Thank you, Leonard. Thank you for Bye. taking the time today. I know you're super busy. I love it. Items need your attention. Uh oh. What was that? That was my computer talking to me. Okay. That's well, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for oh, taking no. the time. This has been one of the bigger pleasures of my week. <laughs> so thank you, Joni and Steve. See you down in Florida one of these days. Absolutely. Thank you for listening today. So some good resources for you, realrecoveryfilmfestival.org and addictionrecoveryebulletin.org. And the e-bulletin, you can subscribe to it and you will get regular things from them that will help you if you're in recovery or maybe help you um, someone else who you know that is in recovery. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back again next week with another interview. You have been listening to the Addiction Podcast, Point of No Return. For more information, reach out to us on Facebook or go to www.theaddictionpodcast.com. Our email is theaddictionpodcast at yahoo.com.